Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to Geeked Out. This time we're going to be going into Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Blacklist, the new game in the series. The series that has been beloved for a very long time. Pretty much everybody out there should know three names. The three names that they should know are Tom Clancy, Sam Fisher, and Splinter Cell. Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell has been beloved by the game community since it first appeared in 2002. Back then it was a different type of third person shooter that gave a lot of people the ability to approach missions differently in a stealthy fashion. We've just never seen that before back then, and it was so uncommon. After the last few years in the franchise, consumers and gamers alike were all really upset at the way that the Tom Clancy Splinter Cell series was going. We were seeing Sam Fisher do things that we have never seen him before. He was turning really action heavy, and a lot of the fans were really, really upset about that. They didn't want that for the series. They wanted a more stealthy, hardcore game that gamers could love. And the Tom Clancy series was taking more of an approach from the Call of Duty series, and that wasn't what fans of the Splinter Cell series wanted. So this time around, Ubisoft Toronto had a game plan for the future of the franchise. They wanted to make sure that they remembered what made Splinter Cell a fantastic game. What made it fantastic was the stealth elements. So they wanted to make sure that they included all of the stealth elements, as well as include some of the action-heavy scenes that we saw in Splinter Cell Conviction. But they wanted to make sure that they were able to please older fans, as well as bringing new ones. This time, Blacklist is a direct sequel to the previous game, Conviction. This time, the plot revolves around a terrorist organization planning to attack the United States of America. It actually makes a lot of sense that this game actually came out in the summertime because of the fact that this game feels like a summer blockbuster, a action-heavy, great storytelling, summer movie that's what this game feels like the game starts off with sam basically leaving an airbase and all of a sudden a hail of missile fire rains upon the base that he's leaving and his helicopter crashes in a nearby river soon after that a mysterious terrorist group who called themselves the engineers have claimed responsibility for the attack and they have taken control of some very powerful weapons in the united states and they have planned to attack the united states on a weekly basis until the united states decides to pull all of its troops stationed worldwide so we all know sam fisher isn't gonna allow that so we play as Sam Fisher as he is in charge of the Echelon campaign, which is stationed in an airborne headquarters, which they call it the Paladin. Uh, here you can freely explore the ship, uh, talk to your crew members, and the game has a feeling of something that you've seen in a Mass Effect series. Yes, EA's Mass Effect series, the way that you're able to walk around the Normandy in that series and kind of interact with other characters and, you know, get to know them, create like a different type of unique relationship with those characters that is what we get to see here in the Splinter Cell series we get to see him go up to characters and each character has a really really unique mission that you can do with them co-op elements and although the game isn't as fleshed out with those elements as a Mass Effect series the fact that the missions that they give you are so gosh darn amazing and fun make exploring the ship and talking to your crew members a whole lot of awesome so with all that being said, Blacklist is not your typical Splinter Cell game. This game takes a mix of the old and mixes in some of the new, interesting, challenging, and stimulating elements that we haven't seen in a Splinter Cell game in a very long time. After the game's 25 to 30 minute beginning, it offers you multiple choices where you are allowed to choose missions which all vary between co-op, solo, and competitive. This is something that you haven't seen in many games before and you wonder why. So as soon as you pop in the game, you are automatically taken into Sam Fisher on the padded and headquarters. And this time around, like you just pretty much get to walk around and do whatever you want. You have a SMI type of machine that you are able to connect to. And that is where you get to choose what kind of missions you want. If you want to do um, online versus missions, or if you want to do the next mission in the story, or if you want to explore other areas of the, of the map, you can. Uh, and then if you want to play some cooperative, like co-op missions with like friends, all you have to do is approach one of the crew members on the ship. They have co-op missions that you can do with a friend or you can do with an AI and still have a lot of fun. This approach to the game allows that the game never actually fully takes you out of the narrative. You are always feel like you're doing something that is part of a story and it always adds to something. And that's a great feeling to have. Now, some of the gripes that a lot of fans are having is that the fact that Michael Ironside is not reprising his role as Sam Fisher. Uh, this time around, we get a different voice actor named Eric Johnson, and sure, it makes sense that a lot of people are very upset that Ironside isn't there because Johnson, although he does a fine job, you still kind of feel like you miss the grit and the old man voice of Ironside. And sometimes it takes you out of the story a little bit because Sam Fisher is supposed to be playing a you know, mid 40s, almost 50 year old man. And Johnson sort of has a younger man's voice. And you can tell Ironside had that gritty voice that we all loved. And I would be lying if I said I didn't miss it. 
So along with all the features that I've already mentioned, the game gives us a cool new take on the Splinter Cell series. Uh, the game gives us a way to upgrade things and make things a lot more fun. It doesn't matter how you approach the game. If you approach it action heavy, stealth heavy, the game always seems to give you something to reward you with. Examples are that if you go into a building and you decide to just stealth kill everybody, you get awarded points for doing it that way. But if you decide, you know what, I'm just going to go in there, go bash it crazy, and just shoot everybody up, the game also awards you for that if you don't die. And the fact that it gives you positives and awards for all those things is a really, really good thumbs up for the Splinter Cell series. And I really, really am happy that we got the chance to upgrade Sam to our liking fix his camouflage, fix his weapons, his gadgets, approach missions differently. There are so many unique weapons, suits, gadgets, and just amazing things that you can find here that you kind of want that reward because it allows you to mix and match like different types of approach to missions. I mean, it really makes you think before you go into a mission how you want to approach it and it gives you a vast variety of things that you can do. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys probably thought I forgot about this, but folks, I have not forgotten about anything. Yes, the reincarnation of spies versus mercs, mercs versus spies, however you want to call it. It's the first time that we're seeing it since 2006 Double Agent, uh, and this time the mode is a bit different. I mean, we get the classic modes here, guys, but now they introduce a four on four, which makes for some great interesting tactical battles. This time, though, we see a different type of mercs versus spies. This time, uh, the... Spies are the only ones that get to play in third person. Uh, the uh, mercs, they have to play in a first person shooter type of element, which in all honesty, when you play as the spies, you feel really, really badass and really, really cool and allowed to sneak. When you play as the first person shooters um, of, of the mercs, it really feels like you're at a disadvantage and it kind of lets you down a little bit. To me, it let me down. I just, I always felt a disadvantage when I was a merc because you're playing in a first person like perspective and you can't see the things that are like around you and the spies, the spies can see if you're walking up behind them or around them and it just feels like a disadvantage i don't know i'm just i didn't like that element of it but the it still makes for interesting combat and interesting fun matches now with all that being said the game isn't perfect folks the game has its flaws and some of the flaws that it has are that the graphics aren't amazing playing it on a current gen console you really really do see some elements of the dated uh textures and pixelations i mean you see it that does not deteriorate from anything in the game but you just notice these things some of the cutscenes are absolutely breathtaking i mean they're like cutscenes out of a movie they're so amazing to watch but the graphics you can tell are not on the same caliber level as other games that you've seen in the industry with all that being said it's nice to finally have sam fisher back kicking ass and taking names the game gives us a fantastic campaign with interesting yet sometimes stereotypical characters that sometimes take you out of the story but still amazing campaign nonetheless when the game does shine though the game shines bright and it makes you forget about any flaws that you see in the game. The game gives us a great mix of action and stealth that we have not seen in previous installments. Any fans of stealth games will see that Blacklist is a great look back at the past, as well as looking forward to a possibly fantastic future. Sure, the game will not please everyone. The game was sure to have too much action for some fans and not enough action for others. But for me, the game is a fantastic game with a lot of potential for Sam Fisher's future and the Spinner Cell franchise. It's not too often that I come across a game where you want to avoid fighting because you want to see if you can make it through the game without killing as many people as possible. The game is fun, guys, and for all of those reasons that I've said, Splinter Cell Blacklist is going to get a 4.5 out of 5 from me on my Geeked Out score. Amazing fun game. If you're a fan of the franchise, if you're not a fan of the franchise, if you want a cool, stealthy action game, this is the game, guys. Sam Fisher is back. Splinter Cell is back. Kicking ass, taking names, and I can't wait for the next installment in the series. I had a blast playing this game. So how about you guys? Did you guys enjoy this game? Are you guys fans of the Splinter Cell series? And make sure you guys subscribe to my channel, like the video, comment below. Make sure you guys let me know which Splinter Cell game was your favorite, and I'll talk to you guys later. Really? Really? Oh shit. Worry about not getting shot. I don't have enough bullets for this shit, yo. Yeah?